I first started playing basketball when I was around 11. That's when I first seriously started playing on the basketball team and everything. But I first picked up and like started liking the game when I was about around six years old. It wasn't that good yet. Just throwing the ball at the basket. Not really hitting it that much. Basketball has been a tremendous influence on my life. It kept me on the straight and narrow path. Um, it kept me from getting in trouble. Um, I knew that if I would get in trouble, that basketball would be taken away from me pretty easily. So I tried my best to do well in other areas of my life. David gets his abilities from uh, probably from both sides, mom and dad. And you know, when I first met mom, she looked slim and athletically inclined, so that was part of my reason why you know I, I went after her. Uh, but his abilities probably mostly came from me. I always kept him in the gym. I was the athlete of the family, and um, he, so he probably got it mostly from me. I don't know if it was hereditary as far as much as being taught how to be an athlete. I chose to be an athlete. I mean, I knew my dad played sports, so it, I mean, that was a reason I got into sports. My sister was into sports, and I mean, they let me try. They let me sign up for any sport I wanted to, except for boxing. I'm glad they didn't let me do that. <laughs> This year I caught up a little bit. I'm at a two point I'm at a two point five in the GPA. I'm trying to get it up to a three in the next two years or higher. Uh, I stress education all the time. That was so much uh, part of being an athlete. You can't be an athlete in school without being a good student. So we um, my wife and I we always stressed education. And uh, he struggled with it for a while, but he finally picked it up, uh, especially when my daughter went to college and we took him down there with her uh, to get some exposure and he, he saw that in order to get to that level he had to study so it, we definitely stressed it in this household. In high school my grades they fluctuated they were up and down throughout but I ended up being able to graduate with a 2-1 overall but I got a really high SAT because taking tests was pretty easy that's how I stayed afloat pretty much. Um, in high school, I didn't really take education too seriously. But when I actually got to college, I just wish that I could could have went back and like did everything over again. Because thinking back, high school was pretty easy, and I could have did much better than what I did. Yeah, we've always discussed secondary education. Matter of fact, that was the goal. Uh, the goal was always to you know use sports as a vehicle to get a secondary education to go to college earn a degree and uh, that's something that vitally important that we held vitally important in this household so uh, it was def definitely objective. In the locker room I was a cool collector guy, I was a clown and I would be the team leader. It's Dave went to Wild. I just know Dave just through basketball. Like mm -hmm. Dave had, an, you know, he was he had, he, was, he did well in high school, so you kind of knew of him. Then in the in the basketball travel team, like in the AAU circuit, you know, you always see him, or whatever, because he's from the area. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you would see him and see him play and stuff like that. So we was kind of connected from there. But um, this year was my first time actually really, really, really been involved, seeing him every day, mm -hmm. seeing who he is and all this type of stuff. So this year was the year what, that me and Dave really got close or whatever. Mm -hmm. Dave's best qualities is his IQ because he's coming from a Division One school. And that's what he brought to the table to this team. Coming from a D1, which is one of the highest levels you can play at, and coming down here, his IQ, he already brought down IQ or whatever. Um, I also believe that his his offensive game, I mean, the numbers show that he was a top scorer in the league and on our team. Him and Josiah was the top two scorers, so he definitely brought scoring to our team, and he, uh, he, he led us really well with that. David Galladay's performance was phenomenal for us this year. He came in as a, uh, a former Division I starter, and his experience was, was, was key for us. Uh, he started every game for us this season. 
as well as he started every game for Mount St. Mary's, which was a Division I school. So his experience, his, his level of uh, uh, ex I'll say experience and strength is what really carried us to the top this year to a championship. And Dave is a character, man. He's a funny guy, man. Like he just, he's always, always has a smile on his face. He's even before games, man. He just, he lightens you up. He put, he like he's energetic, you know. So it's like, he he, he gets you in a front, like not to be too, too focused, but like not too out of like out of been out of shape or whatever. Like he's a character, man. So he's always having laughs and smiles and stuff like that going on with him. I mean, anyone can tell you, just not me, that, that David is a character, man. He's a fun guy to be around. Mm -hmm. And definitely bringing what he brought from Mount St. Mary's definitely helped us a lot because he showed us how it is on that level. He showed us what to expect and he brought his knowledge to this. And I think that's a key reason to why we did well this year. I mean, me and Dave push each other a lot. It would have been times in practice that me and Dave, it was one instance in practice that me and Dave got into it like verbally, and that's part of practice. We, I mean, we were basketball players, so me and him got into it. He told me he got on my case. He got on me hard. Like, he was yelling at me. We exchanged words, stuff like that. And um, when he did that, it kind of brought the best out of me, and he can tell you for himself. When he did that, I started killing practice. All I was just like dunking everything, like, mm -hmm. you know, catching every pass, finishing at the rim, blocking every shot. He brought a spark out of me by just that little argument that we had. And that's what he do, you know what I mean? He wants the best out of everyone, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's been it's a couple instances like that, but uh, he just wanted, wants everyone to do well. And uh, that's what he did for me. So David's chances are, are really good. Uh, David is strong, he's athletic, he runs the floor well. He, his mid-range game, when I say mid-range game, I mean within three-point line to the basket is, is second to none. Uh, nice touch on the bat, on the ball, and uh, of course, when you say next level, that, that's you know, overseas NBA or uh, any other professional level. Sky's the limit. I don't, I, you know, I don't know what what that's going. If he continues to work hard like he's doing, it, the chances are, you know, they, we could see him playing in a professional league. My most memorable moment at PG is when we won the um, Region 20 championship. I mean, it's nothing like winning the championship, so of course that one's going to stick out more than anything else. Um, I felt accomplished. I felt very accomplished because that was one of the goals I actually wrote down on a piece of paper at the beginning of the year saying I wanted to win a Region 20 championship. Like, I actually wrote that down. The most memorable moments for me was um, obviously playing at the Verizon Center. That was a, a once in a lifetime experience for our student athletes. And um, to be in that facility and see how the pros play, and I think that was probably the most memorable for me. And then, of course, watching our guys cut down the net after winning the region championship was quite memorable. Playing at the Verizon Center this year at PG, it was a good experience. Um, for some of the guys, it was the first time. Others played it multiple times before. But we were all excited to see the NBA guys because that's somewhere we all would like to be someday, either there, overseas. We just want to all be pros someday. So it was a pretty good experience. Um, the most memorable, memorable game for David uh, that I recall is uh, the state championship. It was, it was really funny because uh, I didn't think the team was that good. And uh, David would constantly say, Dad, we're going to the States, we're going to the States. And I'm like, this team is not going to make it to the States. But eventually the team made it to the state championship. They lost, uh, uh, lost by a little bit, but they played a great game. So it was very memorable for uh, myself and my, my wife. No academic awards yet, but I plan to become an academic All-American one day. Like, I really want that to happen. But as far as basketball, high school, I was an MVP of my team. I made all met honorable mention. I made the Capital Classic. LeBron James played in that game. Just to let you know that. I mean, I ain't LeBron James, but shoot, he was in the game. <laughs> I made all-region team 20 for PG and all 
conference team and all-star game. Um, for high school athletes, my advice to you is do your best you can, do the best you can in school. Get, get the best grades you can. Try to hang with a good crowd that's not going to pull you down, get you in trouble, and just try to stay on a good path where you're not going to get in any trouble outside of school and just try your hardest and give it to y'all. As, as, as a pastor and a parent, um, I would like to s state that uh, if you play basketball, take it seriously. Um, remember that grades are very important. Without the grades, you can't play basketball. You know, be a good student, be a good person so, you, so that you can contribute to the community. And it's so much more after that. Basketball is only for a little while. So remember that when the days are over of playing basketball, you can go into something else professionally. Uh, you know, communications, journalism, whatever, you know, you desire to do. Some might be a, want to be a doctor. Some might want to be a pastor like myself. So there's life after basketball. So stay focused, work hard, study hard. Well, the, the advice I would give uh, youngsters who are watching now and they want to play college basketball, I have a son that's, that's 11 years old, and I tell him, you have to work hard on the right skills. So you can have some guys that's, that, that are in the gym four hours working on the wrong things, and then you have a, a kid that's working on the right things for 30 minutes. He's going to be better than the kids that's working on the wrong things for four hours. So I want them to always work on the current, the proper techniques of the game that will prepare them for the future. Well, our number one job is to help our student athletes get an education. That's our number one priority here. Um, we meet with our student athletes prior to the semester starting. We explain to them that we are committed to academics first, athletics second. Um, we go over what our policies and procedures are. We do a mandatory study hall for all of our student athletes. They must attend five hours a week where they're not allowed to play the following week. Um, we go, we do early alerts with our faculty members, and our students know that that is our priority. Coach Joyner, when it comes to grades, he's pretty tough on us, always texting us, get your study hall hours in. I mean, texting us a lot, way too much for my liking, but I mean, we had to get it done. He stayed on top of us, it's going, it's going to do as well because we all going to graduate. So. so my expectations for our players is, is actually, is our, is our team motto, is dedication plus discipline equals success. And so I ask, ask our guys every year, even when I'm recruiting, I ask guys, uh, do they know anyone who's dedicated and disciplined that's not successful? And the answer generally comes back, no. So I tell them, I'm going to demand those guys be dedicated and disciplined, and then in, in turn, we'll be successful if they pr produce those uh, results. I would say to any Prince George's County athlete that Prince George's Community College is the right choice and that they should um, give our coaches a chance. And if they come here, we will help them focus on their academics. We will help them move on to a four-year college if that's what they choose to do. And um, they should do it early. Don't, we should be their first choice, not their, their last choice. Um, come, fill out your application, get started. And if for some reason that four-year scholarship comes along, then you can always take it and go on. But if you don't get in early, then you're behind the curve. So it's better to get here early and let us help you get on your right path.
My plans for after PG, I plan to go back to a Division I school, continue playing basketball, and I'm going to work my hardest to become a pro so I never have to get a real job, so I can just keep bouncing the ball and shooting at the basket. <laughs> No academic awards yet, but I plan to become an academic All-American one day. Like, I really want that to happen. But as far as basketball, high school, I was an MVP of my team. I made all met honorable mention. I made the Capital Classic. LeBron James played in that game. Just to let you know that. I mean, I ain't LeBron James, but shoot, he was in the game. <laughs> I made all region team 20 for PG and all conference team and all-star game. All right, so, uh, describe your locker room presence. Do you consider yourself a team leader, the team clown, or just a cool and collective player? Different times, I was all three. Most of the time, it was a team clown. Oh, all right, okay. Um, in the locker room, I could be a team clown, team leader, or, dang, what was the third one? I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Uh, all right. In the locker room, I was a cool, collected guy. I was a clown, and I would be the team leader. It's depending on how I, the vibe I got from everybody else, depending on what I needed to be that day. All right. Uh, if you didn't have basketball, where would you be right now? If I didn't have basketball, I'd be in sports. I'd be either running track or playing football, because I can't, I can't get into the regular stuff. <laughs> Um, for high school athletes out there, I would tell them to do do their hardest in school. Actually, my fault. This is my fault. For high school athletes, my advice to you is do your best you can, do the best you can in school. Get get the best grades you can. Try to hang with a good crowd that's not going to pull you down, get you in trouble, and just try to stay on a good path where you're not going to get in any trouble outside of school, and just try your hardest and give it to y'all. Uh, so what I wanted to say, remember you, how you said in high school you did okay? Should, should, memorable should, should, moments. You have like five seconds. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Any memorable moments from, your, uh, from playing at PG? What's the most memorable moment? Um, when we won region, my most, ah, uh, yeah, okay, gotcha. My what's most. The, what's the most reasonable, uh, right, what is the most memorable moment of the past season for PG? My most memorable moment at PG is when we won the um, region 20 championship. I mean, it's nothing like winning the championship, so of course that one's going to stick out more than anything else. Expand a little bit on the year. What was going on to you? What did you feel at that time? Um, I felt accomplished. I felt very accomplished because that was one of the goals I actually wrote down on a piece of paper at the beginning of the year saying I wanted to win a Region 20 championship. Like I actually wrote that down. I could look at it every day and say I'm working towards this. I'm helping my teammates work towards this. And when we actually got it, it's like like when you actually set yourself a goal and you get it, like you feel, you feel very proud about it. Uh, what about playing at the convention center? Convention center. Uh, yes. Verizon Center. Uh, um, Planet of the Verizon Center. It was cool. I mean, I did. I've done it before because we used to play Georgetown. There. Oh no, nah, I'm saying. I mean, I don't want. I don't want to say I'm cocky, but I mean, once you do it, once you do something once, it's not that exciting anymore. But I mean, it was cool because the first time I played there, it was we was playing Georgetown, so it wasn't no NBA players there. When we actually played there, it was a game after us. So it was a few NBA players there. We got to actually see, like, warm up and stuff. This is PG you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Can you just, like, say it all the way again, please? Just so make sure it's known because some people do know you play the same area. So we, like, when you were at PG, you talked about that time when you were at the Rock. All right. Wow. So make sure you state, like, playing for PG, another memorable moment. Yeah. All right. Um, Planet of the Horizon Center, it was a fun experience for PG because – we got to see some NBA players there. For a few players, it was their first time. Other players, it was like the third, fourth time. It wasn't that exciting. But for everybody, it was the same amount of excitement for us seeing the NBA players because that's always exciting to see some NBA players, to see the players. Dang, 
just know what I was trying to say. Uh, rewind. It's always exciting seeing um, NBA players because that's where we all want to be someday. Uh, I'm just thinking about how we would have edited that. You might have to say that. Yeah, I might have to say that again. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll say it again. <laughs> um, the, the better we shoot, the less we got to edit. All right. Um, Planet of Horizon Center this year, the PG, it was a good experience. Um, for some of the guys, it was the first time. Others played it multiple times before. But we were all excited to see the NBA guys because that's somewhere we all would like to be someday, either there, overseas. We just want to all be pros someday. So it was a pretty good experience. Uh, here's another question. Uh, how hard is the coaching when it comes to grades? Coach uh, Joyner. Mm, coach Joyner, when it comes to grades, he's pretty tough on us, always texting us, get your study hall hours in. I mean, texting us a lot, way too much for my liking. but. I mean, we had to get it done. He stayed on top of us. It's going, it's going to do us well because we all going to graduate. So. Can I give a shout out? Yeah. Um, shout out to Courtney Brown. Currently, about to go back and watch the draft and see him get drafted. My